Hey, crime family. Welcome to True Crime State of Mind. I'm Andrea. And I'm Brooke. And this is our Nevada episode. But before we dive in, I just want to mention, because I mentioned in the last episode about Susan Powell, I just want to mention that um, they have done the testing on the bones and it was not Susan Powell. So I, last episode, I mentioned that the Diesel Brothers were digging in the mines out in the west desert of Utah looking for uh, in a specific mine because they had some tips that it might be the mine that Josh Powell got rid of Susan Powell's body. They found some bones and they found some clothing down in the mine and I was reading up on it and I was the guy who did the podcast called Cold he had said that he didn't think it was her. Like he was like 10, 110% it wasn't her because he's like, they just really, I mean, they, they make it sound like, Oh, it's definitely her. Like this is definitely the mind that they believe that she's in because they like witnesses had seen that it was smoldering and they thought maybe he threw her down there and then lit it on fire. Um, things like that. And then they found some bones down there. And so they were all excited about it and they really thought it was her. And they sent the bones off to two different experts. And one said the bones were human and one said the bones were not human. I think it was just via picture. Like they just send the pictures of the bones and the experts yeah. were like, yeah, that's human. And then another one was like, nah, it's not. So now they actually sent the bones to a forensic lab to be tested for DNA to see if it was her. And it turns out they were not even human. They were not human bones. <laughs> so they're not hers. Uh, the f- Her father is um, getting the clothing tested for DNA to see if the clothing might possibly be hers. Um, but I'm not expecting too much. I really don't think it's, I don't think it's hers. I think it's just a coincidence that there happened to be some clothing down there. Uh, those right. mines have been there for hundreds of years. So who knows who this they are. But the bones were not even human. So, unfortunately, we'll Well, have to put a pause on that that case. Yeah, it does suck. (laughs) And I really, I hope for closure for them, but I really didn't think it was her. Just because, like, the experts that I was actually looking at were like, nah, it's not her. Right. (laughs) So, anywho, uh, Andrea did all of the research on this one. So, take it away, Andrea. I did. All right, so um, I'm doing Nevada, and Vegas would have been an easy one, so (laughs) I wanted to go with something that's a little, uh, maybe less known and in a smaller city, but still going into casino country, Mm -hmm. so this is Reno, Nevada. This is about Brianna Dennison. It's not a huge case, but there have been some episodes on different networks um, with a documentary about her. But she attended Reno High School in Reno, Nevada and graduated in 2006. Um, Brianna had like a really rough start of life. Uh, Her dad passed away when she was only six years old and she had a younger brother who was an infant at the time. Oh, Yeah, it's super sad. Um, Her mom, Bridget, mentioned that this brought them all a little closer together though. And only at six years old, Brianna became very protective of her mom and younger brother. She was a straight arrow teenager and knew that one day she wanted to go to college. And so she was actually visiting um, during this time. It was in, in the winter. She was on winter break from Santa Barbara City College, um, oh. where she was studying psychology. So at this time, she's only 19. This is in 2008. So the, the day before, so Brianna went missing. That's kind of where the story starts out. And the day before she went missing on January 19th, 2008. So she, she was kind of just hanging around her mom's house in sweats, doing laundry, just hanging out with the family, um, just kind of having a rel- relaxing day. And she had plans to go out with her Reno friends that night to a concert. They had a blast dancing and listening to the concert, all of that stuff, but they didn't want to go home. So later they were dropped off at the Sands Casino and Hotel. That's kind of where all the college kids were partying okay. at this time because spring break, right? I believe I've been there. Um, I, I, I've never been to Reno. Oh, you have That I remember. Oh, so Reno. I think maybe we have. Yeah, I mean, maybe you stopped by. So yeah. Reno, I mean, it's, it's very similar to kind of like Wendover where there's just... I mean, there's a strip like, you know, like in Vegas, but it's a much smaller strip. There's only like maybe 
five casinos, I want to say. Like, the big, big casinos, there's only, like, five. And they're very right. similar. Um, I, they're probably owned by the same people, but there's, like, a Fitzgerald's. There's a Circus Circus. So it's a lot like the same places that are in Vegas, but they're in Reno. It's just a very, I mean, you can walk, like, from casino to, I mean... Maybe not. Maybe they're further apart. It's been a long time since I actually, I believe the last time I went there and actually like gambled, I was pregnant with Meadow and she just turned 15 two days ago. So it's been a little while. (laughs) Yeah, everything I saw on it, it was just like a small strip. It looks pretty close together. They were dropped off at the Sands Casino and Hotel. Um, All the party, the college parties were happening there that weekend. She had a couple of friends that she was hanging out with, uh, Jessica and KT are the girls' names. Mm -hmm. And Jessica was just like, I'm done, I'm tired, I'm ready to go home. So she actually flagged down a random car to take her back to (laughs) KT's house that night, and that's where all of them were staying. Because that makes sense, right? Not Maybe in the 70s. 19 years old. (laughs) Not in 2008. (laughs) I mean. (laughs) Right, exactly, exactly. Admittedly, she said this was a poor choice, but she said it was cold. She didn't want to walk. (laughs) I was going to say she was drunk, but she's probably, she's 19, so maybe not. Yeah. I mean, they did say that they were partying, but there was no, and nothing I read said that they were drinking. Yeah. But, I mean. Just hanging out. It's a college party. Yeah. So, but you never know. So. Yeah. um, So, KT and Brianna end up having breakfast at the casino diner. Um, It was shown on camera. And that's actually the last time that she was shown in any, like, video or pictures. So what time? uh, Before she went missing. It was, like, at 2 to 3 a.m. Oh, okay. So they got home. They had a friend, like, a close acquaintance that dropped him off at the house, at KT's house. Oh, uh uh-huh. And then around 4 a.m., KT ended up going to bed. She told Brianna that she can come in and she, if she needs anything, um... And they all lock their individual doors, but they don't lock the front door of the house because okay. they say it's kind of like a, a hotel. So if any of their friends need to come and crash or whatever, <laughs> they can come in. But their individual bedrooms were always locked. Um, but Brianna decided that she was going to stay on the couch that night, which was close oh, to the I kitchen. I think I've heard this and case. close to Katie's room. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure Possibly. it has been a little bit in the news, and it wasn't that long ago, yeah. so I really doubt if you have heard some of it. Yeah. Like, in Reno, on January 28th, 2008, Jessica and KT were waking up after the long night of partying, right, um, and dancing. It was around 9 a.m., um, and their friend Brianna was staying at home, like I mentioned, on their couch, which she wasn't there at this time. Mm-hmm. So they were walking around to all the rooms in the house. They were searching for her. They were... Like, trying to find her, they're like, maybe maybe she got cold and maybe she decided to go crash in one of the other bedrooms upstairs because some of their roommates were out of town. And so they went and looked through all their rooms. She wasn't there. Um, and then they came downstairs and they noticed by the couch that her shoes were still there. Her phone was still there. All of her clothes were still there. And so they started getting a little worried because, first of all, it's winter. You don't have your shoes on. Oh, yeah. To go outside. Like, it's, you know, January, so it's freezing outside. Even if it's in, like, a desert in the winter, it's freaking cold. So that's kind of what set them off and got them a little worried. So KT, and that's how it's spelled is KT. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I keep saying KT instead of Katie. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, KT ended up calling Brianna's mom, Bridget. Um, and Bridget was nervous and scared when she was hearing about all this. Not only because she didn't have her shoes, but... Brianna's a teenager, and she didn't have her cell phone. Right. That's kind of, that's kind of sketchy, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, Bridget started driving over to KT and Jessica's house, and when Jessica called back, she ended up calling her back on her way there and telling her um, that there was blood on the pillow Ooh. that Brianna was using. Um, KT then called 911, letting them know about the blood on the pillow and the stuff that was left behind at the scene. Um, so police were pretty, their senses were heightened at this point. Oh, good. And they were like, okay, there's I'm glad there's they weren't like, oh, happened. she's a runaway. Like they usually are. Yeah. She's an adult. She can leave yeah. if she wants to. I hate that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Which happens all the time. Yes. But I think the blood is what kind of put him to the, okay. I mean, not good. There's something but, wrong, yeah. right? 
So police arrived soon after to start to investigate um, veteran homicide detectives Dave Jenkins and Adam Winnesk. Um, they have a combined 53 years on the force, Ooh. so they are definitely veterans. Yeah. Um, they have a lot of a lot of skills that a lot of the younger generation probably doesn't have. So they both concluded that this was an involuntary disappearance. Good. Um, they found a handprint on the back door, leading them to believe this is where Brianna and the abductor exited the house. A bloody handprint or just a handprint? So, um, I, I, it wasn't a bloody handprint, okay. but it was like a greasy, gross handprint. Ew. And so they were able to get DNA from that handprint, and it didn't match anybody in the house. Oh. Um, so... Yeah, so kind of crazy. Um, things are things speed up pretty quick. Um, they start getting, you know, people together to start looking for her. Um, and when they finally looked at the the pillow that Brianna was using, um, there was mascara stains on it and what looked like to be bite marks on the pillow. Oh. So it looked like she the Maybe pillow was smothered? like pushed into her face yeah. really hard days later that labs did confirm that this was Brianna's blood. So, um, it kind of stepped things up to the next level at this point. Now the whole community came together to search for Brianna. Um, some after working long shifts at the casino, still in their work clothes, they, they would come and put on a parka work the rest of the day, searching for her and then just go back to work the next night. Um, Reno has been named the little biggest city in the world is what they <laughs> there state. It is. So um and and they were showing their support for one of their own. Um, even though she wasn't living there anymore, obviously her family was still there and um And she I'm grew sure up like there. the residents yeah, the residents that are there, I mean that's not they don't have a ton of people that actually live there full time. Yeah. So yeah. It was a pretty sad story, and it was all over the news everywhere there. Um, They actually talked to Jessica quite a bit. Jessica's the one that got the ride home from the random guy in the parking lot, right? Uh And so they kept asking her about the man that drove her home because they wanted to question him, right? They put out on the news and the media stating that they, they just want him to come in and talk to them. They just want some information from him because, I mean... Why wouldn't they want to talk to him? It's a sketchy situation, right. you know, at the house. At so Katie's he house. knew where the house oh, was. Oh, yeah. and probably that it wasn't locked because he saw her just walk right in. Right. Mm. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So they, they definitely wanted to talk to him. And within days, the man contacted police. His DNA didn't match. He was like, take my DNA. I'll do whatever it takes to, to you know, clear myself i i did not do this right so um nothing matched so during this time though while they were questioning him and you know going through the interview process with him they actually received another lead regarding a sexual assault in the same neighborhood that brianna went missing Mm. um so in mid-december they a foreign exchange student um at the university of nevada reno had been attacked in the in the early morning hours near the campus she was quickly approached hand over a mouth so she couldn't scream and assaulted she didn't see the guy's face but she was certain that the guy was caucasian and had no discernible accent so Mm -hmm. she couldn't really give them much more than that he i mean she never saw him she was able to describe the vehicle so well though that it narrowed it down to a make and model which is crazy Hmm. And so they said it was between like a 2005-2006 Toyota Tacoma extended cab pickup truck. They were able to extract some of the DNA, the attacker's DNA from this foreign exchange student. So they were able to cross-reference with what was at the house in the handprint, and it matched. So it, it matched to the DNA that they found on her. Oh, I see. Okay. So they're both the same perpetrator. Yeah. So, um... Obviously, this information was devastating to Brianna's family, but they also, I mean, it was, it gave them hope that maybe he let her go too. Yeah. And, you know, she wasn't dead. So, um, the description was given to the media and all of the sudden everyone was looking, you know, every white male with a extended cab truck was looking pretty suspicious at this time. So. Pretty common truck. I mean, a Toyota Tacoma. 
that would yeah. suck if you happen to have a Dakota Tacoma and just constantly right, exactly. get pulled over. <laughs> it's so crazy. Yeah. But I mean, most people there, they understood, like people were understanding oh, yeah. and they were, wanted to, you know, they definitely wanted to be helpful. This is kind of one of the cases that I found that um, the whole city, the mayor, everybody just kind of jumped in and wanted to help. Oh, good, so, good. Not only were there, you know, was there another victim, but there was actually a third victim, victim that they found. The The third victim, of course, didn't want to come forward because she didn't want to subject herself to, like, the inevitable indignities that come along oh, with yeah. being the girl that was raped, right? Of course. So she was like, hmm... I'm I'm just gonna forget about it, which I think happens to too many women. Oh, for sure. First off, so it's it's sad in its own right. Mm-hmm. But um, she finally <coughs> came forward because she saw Brianna on the news. Like she was all plastered all over the media in Reno. So she's like, I I couldn't sit with it any longer. Um, but she said that this happened in the parking garage of the University of Nevada Reno campus. Um, the offender came up on her from behind and threw her on the ground, and then he put his gun in her face oh. and then raped her. Oh. Um, she actually saw the offender's face in this one um, and was able to give a description to a sketch artist. So do we know if so this was... now they have an image. Was this between the two victims, or was this... When was this? No, this one was in October. So December. October, December, and then January. Yeah. Okay. Yes. That's quick. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, But now they have a sketch of him, right? Now they can get that out there. So both the foreign exchange student and the third victim were told to give the offender their underwear. Um, So he must be keeping them as trophies, right? Or he thinks maybe DNA won't be a thing. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Who who really knows? It it gets even creepier. We'll get to it, but it gets even creepier. Uh. Police knew that DNA was how they were going to break the case at this point. There are so many people that match the description, white male, in a, in a Toyota Tacoma. So um, they tested over 3,000 samples. Oh, my God. And that had been sitting on a shelf, yeah. So, but there wasn't any matches in 3,000 samples. Oh. So they looked hard to, at registered sex offenders in the area. They gathered 700 new DNA samples during this time. And... From men that they interviewed, like the sexual, um, the people that were se- registered sex offenders. But there were some men that just came in and they're like, I fit the description. I don't want you to have to worry about me. Here's my DNA. Aww. So, so it was good that they had people that were like ruling themselves out to make it easier. Yeah. So that, that's definitely a good thing. But there was no matches even in those 700. Wow. So. I'm surprised that the because is, there's not I don't think that Reno has a huge population of people who live there and I'm assuming they are assuming that it's somebody who lives there. So I'm surprised um, that even with this yeah. DNA they're not finding like, oh, it's not you but it's somebody related to you kind of thing, you know? Right. Right. Hmm. Yeah, they're not finding like anything. And I'm sure that some people are a little transient, probably a lot yeah. like Las Vegas too, Yeah. where they're not they don't live there full time. You know, or they're just staying on somebody's couch or whatever it may be. So maybe they have a lot of people that, you know, are in and out and not really living there at the time. It is kind of, I feel like Reno's on the way to a lot of places. (laughs) Yeah. Like you, for us, like you drive through Reno to go to Northern California. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) So it's crazy. Well, the sad thing is they they did end up finding a body Aww. on February 15th, 2008. It's almost a month later. So this was, yeah, almost a month later that they found a body. Um, they had to wait for DNA to, to confirm her because her mom was like, well, she didn't have her ears pierced. Do you know if this, this person has their ears pierced? Or she had, you know, her nose pierced. Can you see that there? Is that something? And they're like unfortunately due to conditions yeah we, we can't tell especially if she if That's she's actually been tell. out there for an entire month there's no way they're going to be able to see yeah. piercings absolutely and it was a guy that kind of just found her he was uh i think they said he would i didn't write this down but i'm pretty sure it was like a power um like a power line worker dude oh so just like the and can't the pink case it was a power or like yeah. a power line worker that stumbled yeah. upon his body too 
Yeah, it's super sad. And so he called it in, and when they finally got the DNA back and they, they found out that it was her, then they notified everybody. Mm-hmm. But the official cause of death was strangulation, which they believe it was a sexually fueled crime at this point because she was sexually Aww. assaulted. Under her body, police found two pairs of underwear <gasps> that were not hers. Oh, so that's so yeah. awful. Um, one of them, when they tested it, it came back to one of the previous victims. We don't have their names because they didn't put them out yeah. into press. But the other one was actually, it came back to her friend, Katie. <gasps> so this guy stole them from the oh, house while he was there. No. Oh, to be yeah. KT, that would be terrifying. Because he knows where yeah. you live. Yeah. He knows your front door is mm-hmm. unlocked. The, Probably not anymore. Yep. <laughs> well, Bridget, um, Bri- Brianna's mom, she actually was like, now that I know where my daughter is, as sad it is, as it is, now I'm terrified for the other young girls, for, you know, Brianna's friends, KT and Jessica. I'm just scared for them that something's going to happen to them because he's still out right. there. Right. You know? So it gets even creepier, though, with this underwear. It actually shows, after testing the underwear for DNA on what came back as KT's underwear, uh-huh. it actually, the the string, because they were thongs, so the string on it actually had Brianna's DNA on it. So he made her so, wear and, KT's underwear? No. Nope, even worse. He strangled <gasps> her. It matched the ligature marks on her neck. No! Oh, he strangled her with the underwear. That's awful. So, yeah, crazy, oh. huh? Like that is horrible. So, she was strangled with her friend's stolen underwear. Oh, I I can't even believe that's it. it's insane. Horrible. To me. You know what? I do, I have not heard of this case. <laughs> I thought I had, but <laughs> that like, does not second. sound familiar. No. Yeah. It was crazy. It's so crazy. I got a lot of the information off the Dateline um, Secrets Uncovered Hmm. episode. It's a new... I haven't watched... It's not a new show, but I haven't watched it before. I've never watched that before either. It has some good stuff. I like Dateline, though. Peacock. On this week's past with no arrests, they didn't really have a ton of leads. Um, They had DNA, but it didn't match anybody in the system. And so, you know, how it how it goes yeah things start spinning out of control cops are trying but it it looks like like to the family it looks like they're not doing anything Uh because we don't see what's behind the scenes they can't they can't talk about what's going on otherwise it could affect the the investigation of course so finally on tuesday november 25th 2008 they got a tip Hmm. they got a tip from It was from this guy's girlfriend. She was telling her friend how on the way back from Washington, they actually found, she found girls underwear in the car that wasn't hers. Oh. And so she started thinking about it. And then she saw the picture of the sketch that the sketch artist came up with. And she's like, man, that, that looks awful lot like my boyfriend. And so the friend actually called in on the tip line and she's like, you need to go check this guy out because he's freaking creepy. So on, like I mentioned on November 25th, uh, James Michael Bila is his name. Uh, he's 27 years old of Sparks, Nevada was arrested and booked at the Washu. I think that's how you say it. Washu County jail on charges of murder, first degree kidnapping and sexual assault. The arrest happened as he was dropping his son off at stepping stones, children's center in reno nevada he's only four his son's four yeah but a a dna sample was collected from james um he had previously been arrested in 2001 for threatening his former girlfriend's neighbor with a knife the neighbor so yeah he sounds like i mean i don't know why (laughs) your 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 former girlfriend's neighbor who's your who that's who you're threatening with i can see why she's the former girlfriend (laughs) I mean, seriously, right? (laughs) 
So on November 26th, the day after the arrest, a press conference was held confirming that the DNA collected from James was a match. How do they get that so fast? Like you hear all these things about how like, oh, it's not like it's on TV. DNA takes a couple months, blah, blah, blah. And this is like the next day. They're like, yep, it's him. Was like boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Because I mean, they're a small town. Maybe they're, and they had big like other counties i'm sure that came out and helped oh, yeah. them i don't know that for a fact yeah. but i assume since it's you know a missing person and it's you had blood at the scene that sort of right. thing you probably had more people come out but still but yeah it's like, happening ugh, so quick it's quick i mean not real quick because yeah. it happened in january and they didn't get him convicted until november but like once they got right. him a tip from him it happened really quick really fast yeah. for sure and they they linked it to James to the murder of Brianna and one of the previous sexual assaults as well. Not the one, not from the girl that was afraid to come right. forward because they didn't do anything. They didn't have like, like a rape kit or anything yeah. on her. So, but she's the one that did the sketch. Give them the description yeah. that got yeah that kind of put everything in motion during this. Right. It was also made public during that press conference that James was turned in by his girlfriend that I mentioned, his girlfriend's girlfriend, um, via the secret witness program as well. Oh, it's okay. So, um, as I mentioned, she confided into this friend, and that's why the call was made. Can you just imagine, though, like having that conversation? Like, I'm pretty sure my boyfriend, my baby daddy, is a murderer. Oh. So. That's kind of creepy. <laughs> Let's put two and two together here. I couldn't so, even imagine that. Right? You know? So, it, I mean, if it's her baby daddy and the baby or the child's <laughs> four, so he's been with her for a long time. So he was with her this whole time that yep. he had done all these crimes. Oh, yep. that's a sinking feeling. Yep. Sure was. Sure was. And I was watching the Dateline episode and they had like, you know, in the interrogation rooms that they were, um, it was his girlfriend and him in the room. And she was like, crying Aww. and she's like did you do this did you do this did you really do this and she was bawling it was like the saddest thing i've ever watched Aww. because not only do you have a like you're in love with this person but you have a kid right with them, you know you're ruining your kid's Aww. life here you know right it's so sad with this um after the tip rolled in like i mentioned this all went super quick and at first james was refusing to give a dna sample so the his son like the baby mom she's the one that's like hey you can use my son and that's kind of how they oh. locked him in at first was that they used the son's dna and knew that it wasn't a link to that so gotcha. and then finally they were able to get his dna by court order. yeah I, I was like i imagine they'd be able to get his dna at some point just be like here's your warrant yeah like, you can't hold yep. out for very long, yep. dude. But at first, yeah, but at first she's like, just use my son's mm-hmm. DNA and we'll be able to know because he was refusing to do it at first before he was officially arrested, gotcha. I suppose. But how sad is that? Like, use my son's uh-huh. DNA so that we can I'm get this moving along kind of glad thing. it's really her son, his son. <laughs> I mean, you never right. know. They, you, you never know what right? can happen is what you're trying to say. I, I mean, it could have it, it could have backfired if they were like, oh, it's not a match. And she's like, oh, fuck, maybe he's not his kid, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Whoopsie daisy. Right. <laughs> he was in, in prison up until his trial began. So on Thursday, May 27th, 2010. Oh, my God. So two years two later. Two years later. Mm-hmm. So he was found guilty of the murder of... Brianna Dennison. Uh, the jury returned the guilty verdict for all counts against James, which included kidnapping, sexual assault, and murder after de- deliberating for only like nine hours. Oh, okay. Is what it says. So defense attorneys argued that, argued about the death penalty because Nevada is a death penalty state. Mm-hmm. I Maybe not anymore, but I know at this time they were saying that James suffered an abuse during childhood due to an alcoholic father and that he was an upstanding citizen before his crimes and that he's been a model prisoner since being arrested. Yeah, because there's no women to rape there. There's no women to rape in prison. So, yeah, he's he's doing real good. He's not raping any women. Exactly. Congratulations. Oh, my gosh. Asshole. Congratulations, sir. (laughs) Yeah. Congratulations for being 
a model prisoner. Yeah. And it, and the whole like so, oh but he you know he was abused when he was a child well a lot of people are abused when they are yeah. children and they don't grow up and become rapists and murderers so exactly That's like we not all a have weird trauma yeah I know a lot of my friends have had some serious oh, yeah. trauma and they are not murderers right. <laughs> so quit with your excuses <laughs> the the jurors obviously they didn't accept these excuses and they did sentence him to death. Good. So I think in their state that it's more of like what it's not really a suggestion. It kind of seemed like it was the jury's decision. Oh, OK. So but the judge later tacked on an additional four life sentences for all the other crimes, including the sexual assaults on the other women. OK. Um, during this time, of course, he put in all his appeals. I didn't write down all the dates that he did it, oh, yeah. but he put in the appeals to get the death penalty off the table. He put in the appeals because stating that they got the evidence incorrectly or whatever it may be. He put in a bunch of different appeals, as many as they're allowed, and then he has it left. So he lost all of his appeals, um, and he will get a date for his death in the near future. So he's still, he hasn't been put to death yet from everything I read. Um, it usually so, takes a really long time, which is weird. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's 12 years later yeah. now. Well, I feel like if they get through all their appeals, right. I feel like they should be like, like let's get let's this get thing going. Then. Yeah. Let's, I don't know. Everything I read, I didn't see anything about the him getting put to death yet. So he's still in prison. Mm -hmm. Thing yeah. is like, I mean, they sit on death row for so long. And at the same time, I'm like, that yeah. is punishment in and of itself because he's sitting there being like, I don't know when I'm going to die. Just like that. Brianna didn't. Yeah. She didn't know she was going to die that day. Well, you don't know either, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, seriously. And they're like in solitary, basically. So... They don't have the same kind of... Oh, death row, you mean? Perks. Okay. Yeah. So they don't have the same kind of perks as um, somebody that's in gen, gen pop, right? Mm -hmm. So they don't get to... They have like an hour of yard time or something Ooh. like that. So after this case, Brianna's law went into effect in Nevada. Um, and this requires anybody that is a, accused of and... Um, convicted of a felony that they have to put their DNA into uh, the CODA system. So this is something that would have helped out in Brianna's case only because they noticed, well, the, the guy that actually committed this crime, James, he, he actually had that um, felony on his record where he tried to stab his ex-girlfriend's neighbor. Um, so in this case, he would have had to have his DNA on file, um, due to this. So this could have prevented possibly, or got him at least to be able to find out who murdered her a lot sooner, uh, because of DNA, um, just because there was DNA in this case. So that's why it's important and something that I, I think needed to be talked about here. Ooh, that'd be a good bonus episode yeah, to talk to about like the differences between oh, yeah. different prisons and the differences between being on death row and not on death row. Yeah, yeah and then private and public yeah. prisons, too. That would be a good one to, to add in yeah. there. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> there you go. Well, at I the like end of this it. episode, well, we have our blooper reel as well, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Oh. Ooh. Well, that was a crazy situation. Right? Of course, this is in 1923. It's not like they have, you know, highly functioning fire stations and that. Right. So it went up in like tinder blocks. Tinder. What is it? Tinder? Tinder logs. I don't know. Tinder. tinder. Just say tinder. <laughs> Just tinder. It went up like tinder. It's either Enos or Enos Gray uh, was the prosecutor. Enos? It's just... Yeah, like it's just penis? a weird name. No. <laughs> no. That would suck. <laughs> court. Like, there there was court and everything. He had a defense lawyer and everything. And and so the there was defense, a trial? Yeah, there was a trial. There we go. That's okay. the word I was looking for. <laughs> I was like, court? There was a court? <laughs> there was a court. There was a court. <laughs> yeah. You know, basketball and stuff. 
My printer is making noises. Hold on. I accidentally <laughs> bumped one of the buttons. <laughs> Maybe I'll just turn it off so it'll stop because it's like checking printer. <laughs> Elvia Perseco? Perseco? Perseco. Persico? <laughs> Persico! That's what it was. Persico. <laughs> Persico. We got it. <laughs> I remember now. Okay, so the lady named, I like wrote it out phonetically as Purse A and Co. <laughs> but it's known. Hold on one second. Okay. Oh, is this still recording? Did yours like stop? It stopped. I can't tell. I'm not zoomed in enough. Hold on. Nope, it's still going. I was just really zoomed out. <laughs> so it was just not moving as very fast. It's still recording. Because I'm like, the little, the like, sound is coming up, but the thing wasn't moving over. But now I'm not as zoomed in, so I can actually see that it's not, <laughs> that it is working. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so I can hear you yawning, dude. I know. You can't hear it in the <laughs> microphone, though. It's not spiking. <laughs> So you'll hear it. I woke up at three thirty. <coughs> Again, I got you. We're all we're almost done. <laughs> yeah, no, you're you're good. But you can't hear it in the mic. I promise. Okay. <laughs> Hit Magruder on the back. Whoa! What was that? What? Hello? Yeah. <laughs> Are no, you I'm there? Here. Sorry, I was just putting my earbud back in my ear. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay I, that just it made a really yeah. loud noise i was like are you okay did you yeah over? it's the i have the ambient noise on so when i'm at work it um, i can hear what's around me still but that's probably why you heard it usually yeah. i don't think you can yeah okay you probably can't hear it on your in that like i could just hear it in my earbud but not on the microphone yeah <laughs> okay so anyways um um, renton and howard were not there because they were pretending Oh, no, sorry. Renton and Howard are the same person, right? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> uh, Christopher and Romaine, James, Ro Jimmy, James, James Romaine. I don't remember. <laughs> right? Yeah. I, well, ah, there I go again. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so Beachy went to Idaho ter Territory. The <laughs> So, <laughs> Beachy, <laughs> I know, you know to cut that out when I go <laughs> yes <laughs> and then it goes All in right. the bloopers <laughs> <coughs> oh man those were terrible um, <laughs> there was a mob of people wait I already read that <laughs> dang yeah you did <laughs> I am tired <laughs> I've been up since 3.30 <laughs> Jesus alright have on the homicide um why why can't i think of what i'm trying to say the homicide uh not anyways squad. whatever <laughs> i can't you think can. of the word either <laughs> like because there's like you uh, have like the the department traffic cops department there we go, the homicide <laughs> like, department not squad not team what is it yeah, i know <laughs> homicide well team probably would have worked yeah, too yeah. but yeah so he's 15 years younger than her yeah yeah so say yeah. sexy stady sexy stady <clears throat> oh my god i can't even say it sexy sadie still got it there we go yeah that's a tongue twister <laughs> woo, woo, woo. okay i'm gonna stop <laughs> One, two, three, stop. <laughs>